morning friends today this uh, webinar is on understanding heat load estimation we from scollenberg are presenting this to you now so let us start okay the first thing is what is heat load now to air condition any building the first question that comes in the mind is what will be the capacity of the ac plant first question what will the capacity so you can see two plants have drawn out here all the animations all the images are hand drawn you will find nothing from google so or youtube so you're not getting anywhere this is the water cooled system and the air cooled system so the capacity of ac plant will depend on the quantity of heat that is required to be removed how much heat do you have to remove based on that only you can find out the size of the plant means the capacity of the plant no so this the size of plant depends on the sources of heat heat has to come from a source the sum total of the following is called heat load okay one heat entering the building there are various sources outside the building from which the heat will enter the building second is there are many sources within the building which will generate heat now sum total of these two is the total heat load based on which you can size the plant capacity the sources of heat the sources of heat are many all these are tabulated in excel sheet all the cooling load calculation sheet also called the heat load estimation sheet so take a look at this this is we've done sun the sun gives off lot of heat you have air coming into the room air has temperature sensibly air has latent heat in the form of humidity it enters the building and this is the calculation sheet okay now this is a typical calculation sheet okay or heat load estimation sheet this sheet is very large and with complex calculations therefore it is divided into parts and explained step by step and hello hello can you hear me sir sir please uh, uh, network issue is there so you please uh, reshare the content shall i start again yes okay okay we start from the beginning this is a webinar on understanding heat load estimation presented by scholar international private limited we are the leaders in online education and skilling in hvac now introduction please reshare the slides pardon sir acha reshare okay i think i'm out of connection no so now what to do please share the screen sir mera wo exit ho gaya sara ek second okay okay i'll just do it can you see it sir yeah please go ahead sir okay no so we start from again this is the first slide or second slide what is heat load 
to air condition any building the first question that comes in the mind of everybody is what will be the capacity of the ac plant now there are two images one is this is the water cool packet chiller this is air cool packet chiller again i repeat these are hand drawn and not taken from google so we will not get it anywhere and every detail you will find in these images you drawn if you look at the air cool plant out here you can see this fan working it's there it's working okay similarly this applies to all our efforts the cap the capacity of the ac plant will depend on the quantity of heat that is required to remove how much heat do you want to remove only when you know the quantity of heat can you size the plant this depends the quantity of heat depends on the sources now what are the sources the sources of heat are many these are tabular excel sheet called the cooling load calculation or the heat load excel sheet for example look there are sources outside the building there are sources outside the building and there are sources within the building out to the building look like we have the sun heat from the sun we have air heat and air enter the building with heat from the air air also has moisture so this shows moisture from humidity and this is the excel sheet so am am i clear now sir yeah yeah audible okay sir now take a look at this excel sheet it's a very complicated system lot of you can see figures and calculations and what not is there so to make it simple to make it simple for everybody to understand so so we have broken up the sheet into parts and and our efforts are step by step like a do it yourself module now see the excel sheet heat load estimate let me discuss them every building is made of several complex materials all these materials oppose the flow of heat so see if there any action there will be opposition it is a law of nature so if heat has to enter the building it will be opposed by the building material and what are the building materials that the heat will encounter one brick wall two doors three glass windows then you will have plaster and then you may have insulation so all the building elements each and every building element is going to oppose the flow of heat into the building right now then all the, the the quantity of opposition is called the u factor how much wood can oppose how much brick wall can oppose every every element has a different strength of opposition okay then there is heat within the building people we breathe in oxygen give out co2 but that we are giving out co2 plus a certain amount of heat because when we consume food food is converted into energy within the body is given in the form of heat okay somebody raise his hand we'll take the question at the end of the thing okay then we have air having moisture Somebody raise hand. So, how do you see these hands now? Hello, sir. Neera ji, can you hear me? Sir, so please go ahead. Okay. So we go to the next step. Is now this is that sheet. There is a complex nature. on every and our excel sheet and practically the most excel sheets this table on the top of every excel sheet the location the space the date the size of building area what is the cfm oa means cfm outside air then i we have added a daily range latitude because the amount of heat entry the building depends on the latitude the location of the building location building on this planet right then the time of the day 
when the sun rises, the heat is less. As it sun midway, but then the sun becomes brighter and more heat comes. When the sun sets, the heat becomes less. So, the sun time is also defined out here in conditions outside air, room air, and different. This is the basic design data that you should enter on top of every Excel sheet. We are providing the totally automated access sheet where you can put in this data. And in our module, we should be given to you what these ablations are all about. Now we come to solar heat gain. Now glass is going to oppose. How much is it going to oppose? Then the area, that factor, and the difference in the temperatures. That is in consideration. So, the very first step to determine the heat load, you have to refer to the architectural drawings. Without that, you can do nothing. First, look at the drawings. In the drawings, you'll be given this compass location, north, south, east, west, southeast, southwest, whatever, whatever that direction of that particular wall. Because you have to take the direction of that wall, right, from which the heat is going to enter the building. It may be a northeast wall, southeast wall. There are four walls in a, let us say, rectangular building. One will be northeast or north, next will be south. And every wall, depending on this geographic location, the amount of heat is determined. So these factors will vary according to the location of that wall. Then you fill in all these data and we have taken in consideration all Ishray data, refer Ishray 2017. We have taken all the reference from Ishray, right? Except for apparatus dew point we have taken from carrier. So we have mentioned everywhere the references which we have taken. Okay. Now, image of building elements. Now, this drawing shows you the things that are involved in the building. So, let us say this wall, you have an air film. Outside air film is moving. It is not stationary. Then you have plaster. Then you have brick wall. And again, you have plaster. And now we have inside the room, still air film. Right? All these elements oppose the flow of heat. So, we take the fact resistance values of all these elements, one divided by R will be equal to U factor, and we use those U factors for calculating the total amount of heat entering the building. For the roof, take a look at the roof. We have inside stale air, then we have plaster, then you have concrete, then you have insulation, then you have tile, then you have moving air, and think every detail is mentioned. So let's take the case of wall. See, this is how you work out the R value and the U values. Okay. So this is now of the roof. Same moving air, tile, plaster, etc., etc. Sigma of R one divided by R is equal to the U factor. Now take this case now for the partition. Now take the case of door. Now ceiling. There are two ways to look at it. One is the ceiling and one is the floor. Now what is the ceiling? We have defined what is ceiling. If the area above is non-air conditioned, take here, here this is the non-air conditioned area, and below is the air conditioned area, then this partition is called the ceiling. What's the floor? Now suppose the first floor is air conditioned and the ground floor is not air conditioned, and this is the floor. Heat is going to flow from 
the ground floor to the air conditioned area. This is the direction of heat flow. Rather than this, the direction of heat flow like this. So every factor has to be tabulated and found out the U factor. Now take the case of ceiling and floor, same method. Sum of all the resistances, one divided by the sigma R is equal to U factor. And use that U factor tablet in this uh, Excel sheet to get the total amount of heat. Now let's take the case of infiltration. What is infiltration? Suppose your room is a hospital. Now inside the hospital, we have a negative pressure because we don't want the bacteria and the viruses to go out, to, to remain inside. Then we have a negative pressure, then air enters through the cracks, through the building, or gaps in the doors, that is called infiltration. This is how we have represented infiltration. Opening of door, door opens, they will enter inside, things like that. So the next step is internal heat. All the elements of internal heat. We have the people, power, life, appliances, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then we get ERSH. Now all this is appears to be very complicated. Determine OL. So every step is defined out here. Then you have latent heat. Now here comes a little bit of psychometry also. Now outside air is going to carry some moisture along with it late in the form of latent heat. So the moisture, the unit of moisture is grains. So from here we determine how much of this grains of moisture is coming inside. This element is also put into the Excel sheet to find out the latent load of the air. We have two types of heat. You all know that. One is sensible heat, which you can sense. One is latent heat, which is a form of moisture in the air, which you can't sense enter the building in the form of latent heat that is there then people also we also give out certain amount of latent heat that is there other sources that is there so from the psychrometrics we determine the latent heat now this is outside air now you have the HG out here you have a filter you see you see when we occupy any building we consume the oxygen we breathe in oxygen and give out CO2. So after a given point of time, the AC room is enclosed, right? So when the room is enclosed, we're consuming all the oxygen and then releasing CO2. After a given point of time, the room has more of CO2 and less of oxygen, making it very unhealthy for us. So to have maintain indoor air quality, you must have heard of this factor, indoor air quality. What is indoor air quality means? We add outside fresh air, which is rich in oxygen, and we exhaust the stale air from inside so that we maintain the level of oxygen inside the room to be healthy for occupancy. So this outside air is enters the HU from an opening out here in the HU room, and we have a filter out here to ensure that it just does not enter the HU. This air comes here through the filter, right? It goes into the through the cooling coil, it gets cold, and then it is through the ductwork is supplied to the room inside. The return air from the room goes back, mixes with the outside air, and then it is recirculated. Then we have final step. This is the final step outside air quality. Now, having said all this. Then the next factor is to determine the apertus dew point. Okay, then you have to determine ERSA. Now, this is an equation out here. How to get the effective sensible heat factor. Now, all this is becoming very boring, very difficult to understand, right? But it is an essential part to understand this thing because without understanding this thing, how can ever you decide on the capacity of the plant? This is continued. I'll just run through this. Run through this. 
very difficult to understand what is this don't know don't know this is this 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 then you have duplicated take a look at this also formula it comes like this if you define effective rules as the lead for beginners they say what is this ersh and all this all this is mentioned in the complete module step by step and all this this is a case study given to you in that after having said that all what is 1.0 so no so many things so many things so to make it simple is we've explained in each and everything by the time you start and by the time you end you've forgotten what what was there in the previous what was there forgotten so we make a summary at the end of it now we have made a summary of references whatever the item is in the course what is the part number and the step For example, solar heat delta T. If you want part number two, refer to part number two, step number five. For glass effects, part number two, step number seven. Q factor for walls, part number three. So you go to the respective parts mentioned here. Go to step, and you will get to know how this was derived. Now, this is the we have put up the Excel sheet. Uh, once you started from scratch, and by the time you reach this, is I'm quite sure most of you guys how was it? How did so in this actual sheet we have given a case study, and for example this factor where did it come from? This came from part number two, step number five. So go to that, and you'll find exactly how this came about. Similarly with this part number, this part number two, step number seven. This part of Excel sheet, part number three, step number nine. How you derived it is all explained out there. This section is this factor is part number three, step number fourteen. This is part four, step five. This is also part four, step five. So wherever these factors are required to be filled in, where do come from is mentioned. How it is. Found out is mentioned in detailed calculation with case study. This is whole the whole part of it. Then we come to this. Same applies to this, and it ends up here with this amount of grand total heat. Now, after all this is done, still very confusing, but very clear references are there. Case study is there. You see this. Go back and get the part number and. Things will become absolutely killer. No, I'll just new share. I'll give you. Can you see this Excel sheet now? Neeraji, can you see the Excel sheet? Yeah. No, this is an Excel sheet, fully automatic. No, having said everything. now we come to the real practical on the ground how you are supposed to do it that is the theory part you have understood yes we have understood each time you have to refer because it's very difficult to understand this factor where did it come from this part this step of oh, oh, very confusing so we made a totally 100% tabulated excel sheet which will be part Of the course material, you fill in whatever the data is. It everything will become automatic. For example, this. Let me go. For example, this. Let's say this is one hundred outside air. Let's say one 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 zero degrees. Sorry. This will become bad equal to just a minute. Now, okay. Suppose this is sorry, yeah. 
this is let us say one one zero degree Fahrenheit, and let us this is room temperature we want seventy five. So delta T is thirty five, right? You have to do nothing. You just fill in this outside air, room air, wet bulb. This you have to find from your uh, psychrometrics. Fill in this. Fill in this. Suppose this is sixty six. This is sixty six. And let us this is sixty four. You have entered this from the psychrometrics. Two. So you have got this delta T is thirty five, and delta grain is two. Okay. And whatever wet bulb that you mentioned, what was percentage you mentioned? Let's say percentage is fifty percent. Now suppose this. So let us let me highlight this in yellow. Let me highlight this is in green. Okay. Now come to the bottom. Here you have. Wherever it is required, it has come automatically. It was required here. It came here. It was required here. It came here. So you have to do nothing, nothing. Just fill in. Now, for example, you have a uh, hundred people, one hundred people. Okay, put the hundred people, and this this factor comes from references sheet. Let's say it is two forty five. Yeah, there you are. Automatic comes here, and similarly, you get the total. This thing out here. Total BTUs out your grand total, and your tonnage comes automatically. You have to do nothing, nothing. This factor also comes automatically. Having got this factor, now this portion has to be selected by you. For example, the factor is one. Then, for one, you have to find the ADP. This I cannot do for you because this will depend on your total building structure location. North, south, number of people, amount of heat inside the building. So all this factor is dependent on those factors, which will depend from case to case. So once this factor has come, only this that will become automatic. Factor comes automatic. Tonnage becomes automatic. Everything is automatic. You have to do nothing. Now what you have to do is once you get this factor out here, from the factor you find out the ADP. Now this room temperature has come automatically out. It has come automatically from seventy five. See seventy five was here. Seventy five is here. There. So room temperature comes here. Suppose ADP is in this case. Let us say one. It is fifty five point two. Let's say fifty five point two. We have entered this fifty five point two. Okay, now what happens then? This is the formula. So this is required to find out the dehumidifier. So tonnage tonnage remains unchanged. From for tonnage, you have to do nothing. It's done. To get the CFM dehumidifier, you have to find out the ADP. To find out the ADP, this we have provided this table on the actual sheet. You have to go nowhere. Don't go anywhere. This table is there for normal conditions, forty-five to fifty-five RH and seventy-five driver. This is taken from carrier. It's put on the actual sheet. So the tonnage has been done. Nothing to do, but to get the CFM dehumidified because what will be the capacity of the HU, the blower capacity, right now? To determine the capacity of the tonnage capacity out here, the blower capacity, you have to find the CFM dehumidified for which. The factors come automatically. You go to the factor, put the apparatus dew point, and you find the CFM. It will come automatically. You have to do nothing. So the only part which you have to do is to locate the ADP. It depends on this factor, and this factor comes automatically. So you get the CFM. This is the actual practical sheet used in the industry everywhere throughout. All air conditioning contractors and all use this basic Excel sheet.
Now, this has been tabled in such a way that it removes all the doubts. You have studied it well, but you have memorized it. But again, since there are so many elements involved, by the time you come using it, you go to again refer this, refer this, refer this. So once you come to the Excel sheet, you have to just fill in this data. What are the factors are there that you have to fill in? Fill in the this data, delta T or delta grain, and all the calculations are done automatically. ERSH and whatever, what are they done automatically? And at the end of the get the tonnage and the CFM due side. So this is the our course on heat load estimation, which is available online. Uh, sir, uh, I think yes. we are already here. We can, I think, start taking questions. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Now it's time for questions. I will take the audio question on referring to this thing. Yes. Yeah, there is one beautiful question by Mr. Azad Haider. He has asked, what is the impact on latitude on heat load? Okay. It does. You, if you if you if you refer to the latitude, right? If you if you refer to Asia uh, Asia data sheet, latitude has a very big impact on the heat load. Now, if a location is near the equator, it's going to be different. If you go to higher up North Pole or South Pole, it'll be different. So, latitude has a very important factor on the uh, amount of heat entering the building. Yeah, especially if you see our Earth axis has been tilted by 20, almost 23 degrees since 20, 23 degrees. So our Earth axis is tilted. There's a different condition in northern northern side of Earth and south side of Earth, northern hemisphere and south hemisphere. So definitely solar load uh, is different at both the hemispheres. So that's why the latitude plays very important, very very important load in heat load as far as the solar heat load is concerned. I um, hope I um, uh, you have clarified your answer. Any more questions? There's one more question, sir. Yeah. I'm getting the question out here. Uh, there's one more question from Mr. Sanket Patil. He asked how to calculate the heat dissipation from equipment for different industrial applications. Yeah, this is actually a common problem face that if we do not have enough data, then how to calculate it? Uh, but if you have an ASHRAE applications handbook, they have tried their level best to give the you know, kilowatt per square feet as a thumb rule. Uh, from there you can take it, but if you have any specific uh, query that if you have any specific equipment or you have, if you have want to have any anything that you want to know that we can help you just uh, type your questions or any just uh, tell us that which uh, dissipation you want. We we'll try to help you and find out the answer for that. Uh, you can ask a question at support. I'm just typing it. Support at the rate of sbgblv.com and just tell us your exact problem you are facing. So we we'll try to help you. Support at the rate of sbgblv.com. Support at Neeraji, there's one more question. Somebody is asking for the value formula. All these formulas are in the post material itself. Referring to part number so and so, you'll find the formulas there and the complete derivation is there. Yeah, uh, all two days of who are attendees, we are providing this course a uh, two days trial absolutely free. You can check this course. You will get the email uh, maybe in half an hour or something. So you can try this course for two uh, for the validity of two days. You can check. This is extremely uh, useful course. The purpose of this course, which we have prepared. It is normally heat load is very complicated thing and you know? it's very very boring you know when we started our career we also find it very very boring to learn and understand everything and half of the time we have to uh, forget and it is very very it's a backbone of our HVC applications so we have made it even very interactive and fun way or in form of animations that even a diploma holder can easily understand how to calculate correctly exactly and uh, you can see the part of animations also Mr. Dhawan has shown to you. You might have find it very interesting. So uh, this is what we want to make you feel of it and let it be with you for a lifetime. Once you like it, possess it, so you will not forget any of them. We have, we have provided everything inside that, you know, right from the tables, reference tables and everything, you will get it. So hopefully you should like it. So we'll take a next question here. If CPH, uh, I guess, uh, I see Mr. Pritam Das has asked, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Sabdar said that extremely useful sheet, sir. Yeah, yeah, it is very, very useful. Once you, you, once you start using it, 
you will find it very habitual you will not go anywhere okay niraj niraj we are giving a case study with the references sheets also issue sheets tables yes. issue sheets so you don't have to go and search anywhere they are providing it for you once they do this they don't have to go anywhere everything is inside yeah uh, and uh, yeah next scph and bypass factors were discussed i guess i have missed uh, any anyway, i could not uh, get uh, this question properly yeah please ask your question if you have separate down support at the top sbgbuv.com so i can uh, we can uh, our team can help you in that uh how to join this course yes sir okay uh, first we feel that you should experience this course free of cost okay let you two, two days we will send you the link experience that course free of cost then definitely uh, you if you, you can just purchase it no issues accuracy glossary book yes all will be getting accuracy glossary book yes at the end of the session you will get the email and in that email how to access it the procedure will be there don't worry because you all have stayed till the end and definitely we appreciate that you have shown the interest and you have interest to learn we really appreciate what is bypass factor yeah bypass factor is uh, sir can you explain or i should explain i can explain you see if you have when you have a cooling coil okay imagine you're looking at a cooling coil and you have a blower sucking the air from cooling coil right cooling coil is made of fins and tubes now 100% air is not going to come in contact some of the air will go for the sides some will be miss it so every coil has a design that how much air will come into contact with the tubes and how much air will not come with the tubes and the fins so Standard design is taken as by a factor as 0.1. We assume 90% of the air will come into contact for heat, uh, what we call transfer, and what 10% will not come into contact for heat transfer. So, if it's for normal comfort applications, we take it as 10%. Now, suppose you have a special application, very low dew point, and all the factors involved, then the bypass factor then specially designed by the coil manufacturers to make it less than 0.1 normally for normal comfort air conditioning right the fins per inch is designed how many fins will be then per inch what will be the tire size of tube and all these things are designed for a standard application as 0.1 yeah in a, in other words in a very simple layman language if i have to explain it's very simply that suppose you have an air blowing from the coil there is a gap between two coils okay two fins sorry two fins there is a gap between two fins so some of the air will go and enter inside the room unprocessed there will not be any process there will not be cooled at all so that air will go inside the room without being cooled so how much is the percentage of the air which has been sent to the coil and how much is the percentage of the air which is gone as a unprocessed and uncooled the ratio of that is nothing but a bypass factor when we say bypass factor as 90% means 90% of the air has gone processed and 10% is been escaped between the cooling coils between the cooling fins and coils between the coil yeah hope i report the report the answer properly and why it is important see more the bypass factor more the heat load sorry uh, less of the heat load if you have a 94% or 0.9 for the bypass factor that means 6% of the air has entered into inside the room as a unprocessed and that is adding to the room heat load because it is been ventilation ventilated fresh air uh what how about if running fan parallelly with ac mr arun kalyan has asked how about if the fan running parallel with ac will it reduce the power consumption i think he means to ask that suppose the split ac is working and suppose the room fan ceiling fan we have started so will it affect the power consumption my answer is no reason is that the uh, it will it will be used only for the distribution of air inside the room but it will not reduce the power consumption as a whole so it will add the power consumption because that heat load of the fan will come into the motor no the motor inside the air conditioned space ceiling fan motor inside the air conditioned space that kilowatt will be added to the internal heat source internal heat source it may be very minimum but still it's addition 
it is so small, so negligible that people just forget about it. It's yeah, yeah. too small amount. Is there any course available for tunnel ventilation? Okay, fine, Mr. Pratham Das. As of now, tunnel ventilation course is not available. Uh, the right kind of expertise we are trying to source it for the tunnel ventilation. And the demand is also not much. But anyway, we will try. Consider your suggestion and we will start working on it. What is the solar gain? How uh, how change to to latitude from table show to select it from? Yeah, we have it included in the course. Yeah, as as we say, solar gain and latitude both are very 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 extremely important. As we explained earlier, uh, if you see the Earth axis has been tilted by almost 23 degrees. So when there is a summer in uh, northern hemisphere, there is a winter in southern. When there is a summer in Canada. There's a winter in Brazil, okay, because our Earth axis has been tilted. So due to that, the solar gains will be different at both the hemispheres. That's why uh, uh, from table we'll get it. Yeah, uh, we have explained how to find out. Very informative session. Thank you, Mr. Dhawan, for sharing your knowledge. Piyush single, Mr. Piyush, you are even a single word from all of you makes us encourage a lot because. Our whole mission is to spread the correct knowledge and very interactive and very very simple language so all can understand. So very very and extremely thankful for your feedback. So filtration is also part of bypass infiltration. Infiltration. See there are various sources of infiltration. Infiltration is through the cracks out outside the wall also through the wind load also there are various sources of infiltration. But the bypass factor why it is major because it's a major source of infiltration. Others so others infiltration through cracks and all, as compared to bypass factor, they are lesser, not that prominent as a bypass factor. Here, there is one question: wind uh, movement also plays a role. Yes, you see when you calculate the U factor, you consider whether the air film is still or moving. That is tail consideration. Yes, wind movement also plays very important role here. Uh, if yeah, when we go to the very very complex project like tall buildings like Burj Khalifa, the wind movement takes a very important role here because it if the as you go to the higher altitude, the speed of wind is very high. Okay, so there are very high chances that it may enter to the cracks and all. So that's why uh, the construction quality also differs as you go to the taller buildings and all. So yeah, it plays a more wind movement, but for the taller building, not for the um, shorter buildings. Mr. Uh, Puru, thank you Mr. Puru for uh, keep up the great work. Thanks, we are doing our bit. Hope you are liking it. Sabdar, thank you very much. Thank you, Shiv Shankar. Thanks a lot, Pravin. Thank you for providing this the two days trial. Yeah, we are of course. See, uh, why do you want to provide the two days trial? Because you, our, our aim is not uh, anything else but to provide you a right set of knowledge. We know that Hitler is very very uh, boring topic. You all will agree that Hitler calculation understanding is very very boring topic. So we want to make it a very interactive, fun, and uh, animation. So even a common person, even a diploma holder with who knows what is sensible, that he can easily understand it in a right way. And I am guaranteeing you, they will absolutely, absolutely love this. That's what uh, that much I guarantee. Because this, me and Arvin sir have prepared this course with our heart and soul inside it. So you will definitely like it. Can we use this calculation for clean? See, heat load is a heat load. Heat load sheet is a heat load sheet. You can calculate it anywhere. Only thing, the principles of clean room is different. In clean room, what matters is how what fresh air uh, percentage you are bringing in, and there are certain formulas for it. We also have a course, separate course on clean room HVAC design also. So you will find it on our website. That what that course, where is that course? You will there is a separate course, so you can refer that course and you can use this sheet over there also. Nice training course provided us. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep. You are most welcome. Uh, Pritam, hi again. Thank you very much. Satya, I thank you, Satya. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. 
you all will be getting a two days trial also and you all will be getting the book also apart from that also in your life if you have in your career if you have any specific question on hsc or any doubt if you have already email id we have shared our team will help you with answers for that and if we have our website if you go we have a courses on data center uh, cooling also we have a course which is very very high demand many people have gone to that course and uh, but is there any special consideration while going for any room underground when you go to the underground room or you do it say basement please clarify because i am not able to get the meaning of underground what means means that sir the heat transmission of the wall will change accordingly delta t minus 5 it will become because there is no solar load here because there is no solar load there so you have to you just use your common logic you have to apply your common logic there will be no solar load and the earth temperature will be delta t minus 5 and things like that you have to treat it like that or that will be done I have shared uh, the email ID of our team. You can ask the questions there. We we'll try our best to uh, answer all your questions with the right and specific answers, not a vague uh, answers. So Neera ji, yeah, I want to wish wish you a bonus announcement. The so next in the series of webinar, we will be uh, thinking of giving a webinar on essentials of electrical for HVAC engineers. Yeah, correct. so we we feel that electrical is a very important uh, element for any hvac engineers if in the field he should be able to read the electrical drawings if in the design section he should be able to understand the uh, electrical section of the tender document right and if it uh, for installation he should be able to understand how you terminate cables what is a uh, the various uh, switch gears how they are installed so things like that so we we feel that electrical essential is very important for any air conditioning engineer so we have a course on that and we are planning to have a webinar on essentials of electricals very soon we shall come in yeah we will announce it uh, very soon any more questions and chatting uh, i'm just uh, pasted the link of our course pages all of you can go into the course pages and see uh, the kind of courses we have created for all our hvc and nep community so you can go and if you go through and just ask us a question if you have any doubts you know so i am from ecbc implementation in our state very good uh, very good mr arun appreciated and congratulations and the webinar is excellent thank you ecbc yeah you see ecbc implementation something good you know we appreciate yeah and as just the one said you know it don't say it's a very wonderful idea you have pitched that uh the electrical is the main essential for all hvac engineer to know as we have observed that many hvac engineers are neglecting this aspect of electrical they think that there is no need of learning electrical and uh, let the electrical engineers do it but as as a recruiter i have faced this many times that now, now clients are coming to us and asking us we want specifically a hvac engineer with very strong electrical knowledge also Because we want to save the money also. Because if he is an electrical, he is a HVAC engineer. He must know at least his part of electrical. Okay, let it not be know about the higher side of the bus bars and all, but at least he should know about his section. But sadly, when we start uh, taking interviews, I am sorry to say, but none of the HVAC HVAC engineers have exposure to electrical. As you and me have developed the course on HVAC electrical essentials, which is must know for every HVAC engineers. 
I think we must take a webinar uh, very soon to empower all about the how electrical is very important, what are the factors to be seen and how to be calculated, uh, how the, what the panel is, what are the important section of the panels. So, uh, it is, we must uh, pitch in a webinar. If, though the course is available on our page, but if we parallelly if we give the webinar to all also, it is very important. Yes, sir. I'm working on that also. So very soon, it should come with a webinar on that. Yeah, correct, sir. Yeah, Mr. Sabda. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, uh, so let us uh, wrap up the um, uh, seminar. Thanks for all the participants. You will get uh, the link and uh, within one hour you will get everything. And the course uh, access also and you will get the the book also. You just wait uh, for the for some time our team to team will work on it and they will uh, reach to you. Okay, sir. Let us go. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. Thanks. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Join now. www.sbgblv.com Skollenberg International Private Limited ISO 9001 Certified Company Leaders in MEP Trainings Support at sbgblv.com